Welcome to Programming for Kids with Scratch 2. I'm Mike Lehman, and thanks for joining me. This series of half-hour shows uses Scratch to introduce computer programming to kids, about fifth grade and up, and curious adults, too. You'll learn all about programming in Scratch in this series. It covers loop blocks, repeat, repeat until and forever, decision blocks, including if and if else, procedure blocks, variables, lists, messages, events, clones, even microphone and video webcam input. I'll create many programs, including games, storytelling, drawing pictures, and programs that demonstrate important programming concepts, including objects, threads, and polling. This series is all about doing and shows the creation of all working programs from start to finish. Scratch is a great first programming language and can have children very quickly creating and presenting stories and creating fun animations, all while learning valuable critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, and the fundamentals of programming without any of the confusing and detailed syntax. Scratch presents programming commands as single blocks that are easily snapped together to make programs with very little typing. Don't let the ease of Scratch fool you into thinking that there's little here. Scratch programs can do a lot of things. Very little math is needed to make fun programs, and I give the very few equations that I'll use in a handful of about 50 challenges. Scratch is free and freely available from the highly regarded university, MIT. With your web browser, you can create, share, and save your Scratch programs if you want to. You can also look online at literally millions of shared Scratch programs, and if you like, you can join the Scratch community. You can just sit back and watch this show, or you can go to scratch.mit.edu, click on the Try It Out icon, and have fun learning how to program, too. All of these video challenge lessons and more are available at my programmingforkids.info website and at my programmingforkids.info YouTube channel. The countdown timer at the bottom of the screen shows how long until a program is first run. This show number 13 focuses on events and objects and introduces the modulus operator by creating a clock. I'll get started. Scratch is arguably an object-based programming language. Sprites in the stage each have their own event handlers and can create their own procedure blocks. Sprites can have their own variables. Scratch maintains several Scratch variables for each sprite, including the XY locations, sprite size and costume number, and instrument volume. I'll talk more about this when I introduce messages between sprites and the duplication of sprites called clones, but first things first. As I've shown in earlier challenges, each sprite has its own event handlers that run command blocks when an external event happens, including when a key is pressed, the sprite is clicked on, or the green flag is clicked on. I want my first example to emphasize that sprites are individual objects, separate from each other. I want to use a new backdrop for this example. I'll go to New Backdrop, select Castle 3. I'll go to Scripts. Motion doesn't show any command blocks. That's because stage is selected. I want the stage to do something, but first I'll need a variable. I'll go to data, make a variable. I'll call it message. OK. Move it down to the middle of the stage. I want to clear the message when the green flag is clicked on. I'll delete the zero. Events, green flag clicked on. Now when a green flag is clicked on, message will be empty. When a stage is clicked on, I want to change the message to from stage. I'll run this program now. I'll click on the green flag. Message is empty. I'll click on the stage. Message has from stage. When the cat is clicked on, I want to change message to from cat. I'll go to the cat. When this sprite is clicked on, data, set message to from cat. Now when a cat is clicked on, message will be set to from cat. I'll click on the cat. I get from cat. I also want to display the cat's location. I'll go to looks, get the say command. I want to show the X and Y locations. I'll go to operators so I can make my message. Get a join and another join. I'll go to motion, scroll down, X position, Y position, change hello to a comma and a space. Now when I click on the cat, it shows the cat's location. I want to add a couple sprites. First I'll create a dragon, new sprite. 
fantasy dragon we'll move the dragon up here I'll copy the cat's script go to cat drop it on the dragon dragon instead of from cat I'll say from dragon the X and Y are from the dragon so that'll be fine the other sprite will be a unicorn new sprite fantasy unicorn move the unicorn over here I'll copy the dragon code onto the unicorn unicorn instead of dragon I'll say from unicorn when the unicorn is clicked on message will say from unicorn and the unicorn will show its X and Y location I want to be able to remove the messages I'll go to events when the Q key is pressed duplicate I don't want to say anything I'll make sure there's nothing in there delete and backspace now when the Q key is pressed the unicorn will remove any message that may be showing I'll copy it over to the dragon and copy it over to the cat click on the cat and the dragon now all three sprites will set the message and show their position when they're clicked on and remove their message when the Q key is pressed ready to run I'll stop the program start it again message has been cleared click on the cat from cat and the cat's location click on the dragon from dragon and a dragon says its location click on the unicorn from unicorn and the unicorn shows its location next I'll press the Q key and the Q key event handler for each of the sprites will clear the message that each sprite is showing I'll press the key messages are gone each sprites Q key handler cleared its message in an earlier challenge about variables I talked about objects and event handlers I want to go over that some more now and emphasize objects and events instead of focusing on variables I'll go to my diagram the sprites in the stage are each their own objects the stage and each of the sprites have their own event handlers each sprite has its own variable values the cat's XY position is different from the dragons and the unicorns they each have their own messages and can each clear their own messages one press of the key causes each sprite to clear its own message three event handlers are run when one Q key is pressed as I discussed in an earlier challenge just as each of the sprites have their own system variables they can create their own variables using for this sprite only each sprite would have the variable my own variable but each my own variable would be unique to each of the sprites I hope this diagram helps show how each sprite and the stage are each their own objects I'll return to scratch now I'm finished with this example I'll uncheck message and remove the commands from all the sprites the cat and the unicorn I'll remove the commands from the stage too I want this example to have the dragon and unicorn sprites move toward each other and count the number of times they make contact I don't want the cat sprite for this example I'll hide it and I'll start with the dragon I'll make the dragon move towards the unicorn I'll go to events when the green flag is clicked on I first want the dragon to go to its location now I'll go to motion go to this is the dragon's current location which matches what's on the right I want the dragon facing the unicorn it's facing the wrong direction I'll get point and direction I'll choose left instead of right click on it okay the dragon's facing the unicorn now but it's upside down I'll add that onto the green flag and I'll need to change its rotation style get set rotation style the command block is left right right now the dragon is acting like all around 
I only need to click on Set Rotation Style. I'll click on it. Now the dragon is oriented to be only left-right. I'll attach it to the green flag. I want the dragon to move towards the unicorn. I'll go to Control, Forever. I'll need to move, Motion, Move. Ten steps will be pretty fast. I'll change it to three, take a little longer. If the dragon were to move right now, it would move horizontally across the stage. I want it to move towards the unicorn. I'll get point towards. I'll point towards the unicorn. Now when it runs, it'll be pointing at the unicorn and moving three steps towards the unicorn. The dragon needs to know when it's touching the unicorn. I'll go to sensing, touching, unicorn. I want to count the number of times a dragon touches the unicorn. I'll go to Control, if. If the dragon is touching the unicorn, I want to count it. I'll need a variable. Go to Data, make a variable, touched, unicorn, count. For this sprite only, only for the dragon. OK. I'll put the dragon's count over here have a variable. Now I can change it by one. I can count when it touches the unicorn. I need to start this variable with a value of zero. Set. I'll put the initialization. Count will be set to zero. Then every time it touches the unicorn, it'll change the count. Whenever it touches the unicorn, I want it to move back to its original place on the stage. I'll go to motion. Get the go to. Add it into the if. The script looks right. I'll go to Unicorn. Right now I only want the Unicorn to go to this position. Go to. When the green flag is clicked on, Events, Green Flag. I'll go back to Dragon. I first want to get this handler working correctly. Then I'll copy it to the Unicorn and change it. I'll run this now. Click on the green flag. It's going. Touches. Count as 1. Count is 2. Count is 3. That's working nicely. Well, that's good. I'll get the dragon's code and drag on to the unicorn. <laughs> I'll go to unicorn. I'll need to change its script now. Get rid of the other one. Save the go to. Don't want the dragon's go to. I have the go to that's for the unicorn. I want the unicorn to point to the right. I'll keep the same rotation style left right. The unicorn will need its own variable. I'll go to data, make a variable, touched, dragon, count. For this sprite only, OK. Move it up. I'll change the variable counter. Touch dragon count, touch dragon count. Need the point towards the dragon. Three steps is good. Touching the dragon. I need to go back to my XY location. Get rid of that XY. Motion, go to. Now when the unicorn touches the dragon, it'll go back to its original position. I think the unicorn's code is ready. When I click on the green flag, the two sprites will start in their original positions and move toward each other. I'll start the program and watch that the counters are initialized to zero. Counters are zero. There's one touch, two, three. That was going too fast. Kept bumping into each other. Slow it down. Change it to one step. Go to the dragon. One step. Ready to run. I'll click on the green flag. Ah, that'll be easier to see. One, two, three touches. Stop the program. I only have three counts. The sprites made contact three times, but the total of the two counters is only three, not six. So only one sprite was seeing the contact, not both sprites. 
Twice the dragon saw the contact, and once the unicorn saw the contact. I have the dragon scripts up right now, but it seems to be more random as to which sprite sees the contact. When a sprite sees that it's touching the other sprite, it moves away before the other sprite can see that it's touching. So the touch is only seen by one sprite, not both sprites. Each sprite is its own object. Each sprite is running independently of the other, and each sprite is sensing things around it. If I delay the go-to just a little bit, it could give the other sprite enough time to see that it's touching the other sprite. I'll go to Control, Wait. I'll add a very small wait. I'll try a hundredth of a second. 0 0.01. It's probably enough just to do the wait and give the other sprite a chance to run and see what's going on, but I'll find out. I'll go to Unicorn, add a wait for it. Change 1 to 0 0.01 for one hundredth of a second. I'll run the program now. Counts are 0. Contact. Both counts are 1. Both counts are 2. Both counts are 3. The wait allows both sprites to count the number of times they contact, but this is not an acceptable solution when both sprite objects need to know when they've made contact. I'll address this problem when I get to sending messages between sprites in later challenges. For now, I'm focused on objects and events. I'm finished with this challenge. I've shown that the stage object and sprite objects each have their own event handlers, and that sprite objects each have their own private variables and scratch system variable values. The stage and sprites are each their own objects. I hope you'll experiment with these examples. Try adding more event handlers to the first example. Maybe have the sprites face to the left or to the right when the L or the R key is pressed. Or have the sprite show a different message when some other key is pressed. Or in the last example, try having the dragon breathe fire for a little bit when it detects it's touched the unicorn. You'll want to change the dragon's costume. Or try having each sprite maintain a count of the highest number of steps between the times it detected touching the other sprite. But above all, have fun with the challenge. In this challenge, I'll create a simple clock with only the hour hand to help show how the modulus operator works. First, I want a clock in the center of the stage. I'll get the clock's hour hand sprite so I can determine a reasonable size. I'll delete the cat, delete, new sprite, things, arrow two. I want the arrow in the center of the stage, motion, go to, go to zero, zero, when the green flag is clicked. Run it. It's in the middle of the stage, but I want the pivot point to be in the center. I'll go to Costumes, Set Costume Center, move it to the pivot point. Better. Now to make the simple face of a clock, go to Backdrop. I want to draw a circle. I'll click on Ellipse. I'll hold the Shift key down. That makes a circle. Looks like a good size. Move it over here. That should work. Looks like it's nicely centered. Good enough for this example. I'll put some numbers on. Text. I'll use the scratch font. Scratch. I'll put a 12 in. Move the 12 down a little bit. About there. Put the 3 in. Text, three, move it about there, put the six in, move it down a little bit about here, text, put the nine in, it looks about right, I'll move the twelve down a little bit. I have select already selected. Select the 12. Move it down. That looks about the same as the others. That'll work. Can give it a little bit of color. I'll select green. There's my green. Use the fill. I'll fill it in. Uh, the 6 and the 9 will need it too. I'll try dropping it inside and inside.
I'll go to the scripts for the arrow now. Scripts, arrow. I'll try moving the clock's hour hand sprite. I'll go to motion, point in direction. It's pointing at 90, which is to the right. I can try down. Good enough. Left. Good enough, a bit farther over. Try up. Good enough. And that was all four of these menu entries. Now how to move the sprite for each of the hour positions. A circle is 360 degrees. The clock has 12 hours, so they are 360 divided by 12 degrees apart, which is 30 degrees. I'll try that. Operators. Multiply. Times 30. Now we only need to enter the number of hours. We can try 0 which would be midnight as it's showing. Change it to 1. Try it. It's at 1 o'clock. 2. 2 o'clock. 3. 3 o'clock. 3 times 30 is 90. And that's at 90 like it was showing in the menu. 12 was 0 degrees. 90 degrees is a right angle. Makes sense. I'll try 6 hours. Pointing down, I'll try 9 hours, which would be 270 degrees, to the left, and back to 0 at the top. I only need to multiply the hour, 0 through 11, times 30 to get the right number of degrees. I want to show the relationship between hours that keep increasing beyond 12 and the cyclical hours of 0 through 11, even though we label the 0 hour as 12. I want a couple variables. I want a variable of time and hours that starts at zero and keeps incrementing past 11. Data, make a variable. I'll call it hour time. Global, okay. It'll be available for all sprites. I also want a variable with the hour values zero through 11 for the current hour in hour time. Make a variable, call it my hour for this sprite only. Okay, I'll bring it underneath hour time. My hour will be between 0 and 11, while hour time will start at 0 and will keep incrementing past 11. I'll initialize them both to 0. Set. Duplicate. Hour time. I want a loop to move the clock. Control. Forever. I'll move point in direction in the loop, but I need to set my hour first. I'll go to data, set my hour. My hour needs to keep cycling between 0 and 11 based on hour time. Go to operators. I'll get modulus. The modulus operator is the remainder of division. A couple examples are included in the help. I'll run some right now. Try 1 and 12. 12 goes into 1 0 times and has a remainder of 1. Try 2. 12 goes into 2 0 times. That would be division. Remainder is 2. That's the modulus. Try 0. 12 goes into 0 0 times and as it showed, the remainder is 0. Try 11. 12 goes into 11 0 times with a remainder of 11. Try 12. 12 goes into 12 one time with a remainder of 0. 12 goes into 13 one time with a remainder of 1. 12 goes into 14 one time with a remainder of 2. And 12 goes into 15 one time with a remainder of 3. I'll use the loop to show these variables, but first I'll set my hour. I want to set my hour to hour time modulus 12. Data, hour time, mod 12. Hour will be 0 through 11, which will be perfect for point and direction. I want to slow down the loop a little bit. Control, wait one second. I want hour time to change. Data, change. 
our time by 1. When the program starts, the two variables are initialized to 0. My hour is set to 0 mod 12, which is 0. Points in direction 0 times 30, which is 0 degrees. Waits a second. Changes our time by 1. Our time will be 1. 1 modulus 12 is 1. Point in direction of 30 degrees. Wait. Change to 2. The loop keeps incrementing our time. While it's incrementing our time, my hour will cycle from 0 up through 11, then 0 up through 11, and keep repeating doing that. I'll run the program up to a count of 40. Make sure the program stopped. Run it. Time is going by the hours. They're both at 5, 6, 7. It'll do that up through 11, then at 12, our time will keep going up. My hour will cycle back to 0. 3, 4. My hour is showing which hour it's pointing at. It'll continue cycling up to 9, 10, 11, now back to 0. One more time. It's counting on 3. Our time is increasing more and more. It'll go up to 36. 12 into 36 is a remainder of 0. And not even up to 40. Stop it. 12 goes into 40 three times. That's 36. 36 from 40 is a remainder of 4. Hopefully this simple example helps give a feel for modulus. I'm finished with this short challenge. I encourage you to play with the program and get comfortable with the modulus operator. Try changing the program. Try changing the clock from a 12-hour clock to a 24-hour clock. Try adding a minute hand, changing our time to be time in minutes instead of hours, and display two clock hands. Try making a clock to show the current time of hours and minutes using the current time from the sensing palette. The current operator has minutes, hour, and second. Instead of setting our time to zero and changing it by one, use these values. But most of all, have fun with the program. I'm glad you could join me. You can review these and all of my challenges at my programmingforkids.info website and on my programmingforkids.info YouTube channel. I encourage you to try the things you've just learned and explore the extra challenges I've suggested. I hope you can join me for the other shows. Until next time, have fun being creative.